When CL first unveiled its Naxra sodium ion battery alongside the Free Void Dual Power and Shenjing Super Fast Charging Batteries during its Super Tech Day on April 21, 2025, many were not prepared. Imagine just for a moment, a battery that works both in freezing winter and hot deserts, yet it won't even catch fire. A battery that passed the nail penetration, the high drilling test, the sawing test when it's fully charged, and the voltage is still stable. CL confirmed that Naxra has officially entered mass production and is expected to ramp up output reportedly starting as early as June 2025, with full-scale manufacturing underway by late 2025. This battery showed a critical shift away from lithium dependence, which is scarce, to tapping into sodium availability and abundance. That means cheaper raw materials, more stable prices, and less geopolitical risk. In fact, in their recent YouTube video, CL claimed Naxra passenger EV cells could reach 175 watt-hour per kilogram at approximately 10,000 plus cycles, minus 40 to plus 70 degrees Celsius operation, and a 500 kilometer range. Experts believed with CL, there would be sodium ion market growth probably under $1.5 billion by 2030. To put this in perspective, global EV sales in 2024 alone were worth over $500 billion, and they're expected to double by 2030. If sodium ion hits even a fraction of that, say 5 to 10 percent, we're not talking $1.5 billion anymore, we're talking tens of billions. That's the kind of jump Naxra could trigger if it convinces automakers to switch from lithium to sodium at scale. How safe is CL Naxra? From what was demonstrated on their YouTube video, it's very safe. Their engineers ran it through extreme safety tests, they ran a multi-axis continuous crush test on it, attacking it from multiple directions, a semi-cylindrical crush plate with a 75mm radius was used, and they pressed down on the battery along its x-axis until it deformed by about 30%. They also did on the z-axis, squeezing it to 15% deformation before moving to the y-axis for another 30%. Yet, the fully charged battery remained charged after the multi-axis crushing. You know, it's one thing to design a battery that performs well in ideal lab conditions, but it's a whole different challenge to make one that can take this kind of abuse and still remain safe, with absolutely no explosion, to make sure it's even safer and more reliable. They also ran it through an 8mm temperature resistance needle, put it through a high-speed drilling test, and even a sawing test. Yet, there was still no fire. Temperature Extremes Naxra thrives from minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 70 degrees Celsius. In fact, even at minus 40 degrees and just 10% charge, it can still deliver 90% of its usable power. It also has 5C super-fast charging, adding 520 kilometers in 5 minutes, which is honestly a game-changer. CL's tests show that Naxra's sodium-ion chemistry, combined with their engineering design, offers a level of resilience that could totally redefine safety expectations in electric vehicles, heavy-duty transport, and grid storage. Sodium mining has actually been less environmentally destructive than lithium or cobalt mining. Sodium is also an easier and cheaper recycling process, which could make sodium ion a lot greener over its life cycle. CL can even tap into sodium sources in seawater and mineral deposits like soda ash, both locally and globally. And the best part, there would be a massive reduction of carbon footprint compared to lithium ion EVs. Should the EV market brace for the impact? Definitely. This will disrupt all balance because CL's 10,000 plus cycles showed that if used daily, the pack could theoretically last over 25 years, which is well, far beyond the typical 8 to 12 year EV lifespan. The crazy part is that the 5C rate, being equal to 520 kilometers in 5 minutes, isn't just faster than Tesla superchargers, but about 8 times quicker than current mainstream EVs. At this rate, it could even completely rewrite winter EV ownership, as most lithium-ion EVs lose 20 to 40 percent range in freezing conditions, and CL's Naxra reportedly keeps 90 percent usable power at minus 40 degrees Celsius. If Naxra becomes successful, it means more EVs on the road, as it will address major concerns about speed, charging costs, and range.
Aside from EVs, Naxra would be great for various energy storage. CL is also developing Naxra batteries for heavy-duty trucks, which would reduce cost compared to lead-acid batteries, and because Naxra's cycle life and safety make it perfect for stationary energy storage, it could quietly dominate the grid market before EVs like LFP did in China. So, who else is in the game? Well, Faradion is pioneering non-aqueous sodium ion tech, and, you know, they're backed by Reliance Industries, focusing on both mobility and grid storage. There's actually opportunity for scalability via existing lines. Tiamat also comes in strong with fast-charging high-power batteries. We're talking a 5-minute charge here. They received 30 million euros for a 5-gigawatt-hour factory by 2029. Their real strength is that it can charge in just 5 minutes. Natron Energy, being the first U.S. company to produce sodium ion commercially, has actually hit UL safety standards and they're scaling up to 24 gigawatt hours per year by 2028 with a $1.4 billion gigafactory. Heine Battery also released their High Sing Sodium Ion Solution, which is approximately 165 watt hours per kilogram, can reach a full charge in 20 to 25 minutes, and has a longevity of about 8,000 cycles. Experts have even predicted affordable mass market potential for Heine battery. Even Northvolt has developed sodium ion cells with 160 plus watt hours per kilogram energy density using abundant materials, mainly aimed at energy storage, but CL Naxra is still leading with 175 watt hours per kilogram and a 500 kilometer range with approximately 10,000 plus cycles. While CL's Naxra battery earned plenty of praise for surviving extreme crush nail penetration and drilling tests without explosion, some people aren't convinced just yet. The skepticism boils down to one main point. All the tests so far have been run by CL itself, and some feel it's all marketing. They won't fully buy the idea until a third party does the test, not CL. In fact, it should be done by individuals to actually test and see if the claims are true. And also, what happens when you overcharge, as that's the cause of EVs catching fire. In many EV fire cases, thermal runaway has been triggered not by physical damage but by faults in charging systems, leading to excessive voltage or heat. Skeptics believe CL hasn't shown public footage of deliberate overcharging tests, and they want to know whether Naxra's sodium ion chemistry can truly stay stable under that condition. More questions like, shouldn't CL do short-circuiting between cells in a bigger pack, are being asked. They have seen that the single-cell testing was impressive, but EV batteries operate in a bigger interconnected pack. That means short circuits between cells or in the pack's bus bars can create cascading heat and failure modes, so CL has more work to do, demonstrate what happens when a multi-cell pack is shorted. Yes, Naxra is strong for sodium ion, but it's still lower than the best lithium ion or future solid-state cells, which could possibly limit ultra-long-range EVs. Will CL Naxra be another solid-state battery hype? No, CL Naxra is less likely to be another solid-state hype. Solid-state batteries promised huge energy density and safety but didn't push through because they were too expensive, too hard to make, and they don't last in the real world just yet. Unlike CL's Naxra battery that's already in mass production using cheap and abundant sodium, it even works in extreme temperatures and is now being slotted right into existing lines. Yes, sodium-ion batteries generally weigh more than lithium-ion for similar energy density because sodium atoms are heavier and larger, but CL is countering this by optimizing cell-to-pack integration, reducing structural components, and using advanced lightweight materials in vehicle battery housing. This could be the future of EVs. What if LFP and solid-state batteries double down? Yeah, the probability of solid-state battery breakthroughs overtaking sodium ion if they scale faster is high, the clause is if. It's also worth noting that LFP is already cheap and proven, so Naxra needs to clearly beat it in cost or performance to convince automakers to switch. Aside from EVs, Naxra is coming for other sectors, 
Imagine your drone still flying in intense snow and your laptop also lasting 20 years without a battery swap, or better yet, your e-bike charging in minutes with no possible explosion. So even if CL doesn't eventually make Naxra batteries for EVs, they could reach markets that need safe, cheap, cold-tolerant batteries. What's the way forward? CL should answer the questions of the batteries being overcharged, let third parties perform tests on multi-pack short-circuiting, and then mass-produce it in the grid sector to scale. But the bigger question is, would you trust a KATL Naxra battery in